Welcome back to the Kaiser Report. I'm Max Kaiser. Time now to go to Washington State and talk with silver guru extraordinaire, David Morgan of silver-investor.com. David Morgan, welcome back to the Kaiser Report. Max, it's great to be with you always. All right, David Morgan, silver started the year with the biggest one-day surge in three years. Where do you see silver going this year? Well, first of all, I'll tell you that, Max, and it's already in the public uh, domain. But before I start, I just want to give the key word for all markets, especially silver, and that word for 2012 is volatility. We saw it, as you say, on the open here and got a better than 6% increase in one day on good volume. I see silver going somewhat sideways in a very broad, very volatile trading range for quite some time. I see silver basically doubling in the course of 2012. So specifically, I'm already on record saying I see $60 silver prices by the end of 2012, and I think it may take as long as the whole year to get there. All right. Uh, you know, silver and gold, of course, are both financial instruments, but they're also political footballs uh, mm -hmm. in the United States in particular. Candidates like Ron Paul, who, who are trying to bring back honest money and to get rid of the uh, Federal Reserve, have made gold an issue. Uh, to what extent do you think um, gold prices and silver prices are, let's say, manipulated by those with a political agenda, David Morgan? Oh, a great deal. You couldn't really put a percentage on it, but certainly gold, especially silver as well, are both uh, managed. I like that word better than manipulated, but regardless, there's certainly powers in the markets with forces in the derivatives that can force the price down almost at will based upon a plethora of naked shorting, and that's taken place again and again and again. The long-term trend, however, cannot be manipulated. The long-term trend for gold and silver is still up. That's what you really need to focus on. Would silver prices be higher without them whacking down from the derivatives markets, and would gold be higher? Yes, they would be. But you got to look at that, I think, as an opportunity. And one question, Max, if I may, is that I get this constantly, and that is, well, if they can do this, then what's to prevent them from doing it you know, indefinitely or forever? Or why would I get in that market? And the answer is they cannot do it indefinitely. They're losing control. There is no way out of this situation. And because of the fact that a piece of paper does not equal a piece of gold, they're separate physical things, that fact will trump the market at some point. And it isn't an overnight affair, although it's possible that anomaly could occur. But the fact is an ounce of physical metal is something unique <clears throat> and it's very rare and it's scarce and it's precious. And because of those facts, you're going to find that somewhere, and it could be this year, there's going to be a parting of the ways. It's going to be the Red Sea again. You're going to find one set of mashing and grinding of teeth of people that think that they own something because they have a certificate that says that silver's on it or gold's on it. And yet that's all they have is a certificate. So because more and more people are waking up to this because of the MF Global, the CME ruling, what's going on throughout the derivatives industry, which is totally beyond comprehension, you're going to find more and more people coming to the physical side of the market. All right. I wanted to ask you about Eric Sprott and what he's doing up there in Canada for a second, because he recently made an appeal to the silver industry, the silver mining industry, that they, if I get this correct, or you should correct me if I get this wrong, his idea was that for silver producers to retain earnings in silver or not pay out in silver. What exactly was he proposing, and what do you think of the idea? Well, first of all, I like the idea, not to take any way, anything away from Eric Sprott, but that was something that you know I had, and I won't say I was the first one, and I wasn't, but I had proposed that very early on at uh, the Natural Resources Conference in Chicago with uh, Rob McEwen. Rob was the head of Gold Corp at the time. Gold Corp and in the early days was holding back gold as an asset for Gold Corp shareholders. I said, this is phenomenal. People love it. And we need to do something like this on the silver side. So that idea has been around for some time. It was proposed at one of the early silver summits uh, to one of the larger silver companies. It got in kind of an open floor debate that got a little bit heated. But I like the idea. Uh, one company actually had done it, Silver Standard, had done it to a, a lesser degree. Uh, my friends at um, Endeavor Silver have kind of held back some of their third quarter earnings in silver, so you could call them retained earnings in, me in metal. I'm not sure it will grab hold. Uh, I like the idea, though. 
The reason I don't think it'll grab hold is if you talk to most of the miners, they'll say this statement. We're miners. We're not commodity traders. We don't really know what the future price of silver is. We just go quarter to quarter to get our earnings, and, and that's what our business is. However, a lot of these same companies say, well, what can I do that's unique that will make our company stand out from all the others? Well, you just gave us the answer. Hold back the earnings and physical metal, and you will be, you know, in my view, head and shoulders above the rest of the pack, and you'll probably get a huge premium on your share price. Um, so this is obviously an idea that uh, is the complete opposite of what we just saw a few years ago, where companies like American Barrick, a big gold producer, was actually in the market selling short gold as a hedge, uh, and they had a huge short position on their books, and this was contributing to price depreciation in the metal. So I guess if they're not going to do the retain, retention of precious metals idea, at least they're moving away from shooting themselves in the foot by shorting their, by the precious metals. Agreed with that, David Morgan. I, I couldn't say it better, Max. You're spot on. <laughs> All right. Now, bond manager Bill Gross, the famous uh, bond guru, uh, he, he is to the bond market what you are to the silver market. Uh, he, uh, he says that markets are slowly imploding because there's too much paper and too little trust. So this is kind of following up on what you're saying, David Morgan, but can you speak a little bit more about this? Well, the bond market's really the key to the kingdom. I mean, there's so much more that we all have vested in the, in the system. And what I mean by system is a global financial system, and it's all based on debt, and it's all based on the ability to pay that debt off at some point. It's impossible to do so. And because more and more people are recognizing that fact, a lot of people are waking up. So now you get into what I call the, in the financial survival mode. And the financial survival mode is the realization of the truth that these debts cannot be paid. So you either default on the debt and say, we can't pay it, take 50 cents on the dollar, or you default by printing the currency to the point where people won't accept it anymore. I think the latter route is the way it's going to go, although I don't rule out the former entirely. We get a downgrade in the United States one more notch. It's my understanding that there'll be a lot of money market fund managers that are required to dump the bond. Why? Because they have a certain criteria that's their mandate to hold a certain credit rating or above. If it goes below that rating, then they've got to sell it. So there's a lot of things out there in the bond market. And I don't talk about it often, but thanks for opening up the question, Max. It used to be one of my areas that I wouldn't say of expertise, but I spent a lot of time on. I don't anymore, but I know the fundamental facts, and those are the facts. And because of that, what's very scary of what could take place this year in the overall financial system based on the mistrust. Look, the insurance companies aren't buying them. The pension funds aren't buying them. Bill Gross dumped a great deal of, of U.S. Treasuries. Nobody wants this stuff. So what's really happened is a short circuit. The short circuit is we got to sell these bonds. Well, the, the feds of the world are basically buying them, and that's printing the money. Yes, technically, the America borrows $3,600,000,000 a day. I mean, that's basically, you know, 10 days you bought up the entire silver supply. Regardless, <clears throat> it's a mess, and it's not getting better, and no one's offering any real solutions. All right, now, the reason we talk about silver is because looking back over the past 10 years, we see the top performing assets in the very top of that league table. You see oil did very, very well. Uh, gold did even better than oil. But at the very top, number one performing asset over the past 10 years has been silver with an 800% gain or so. Now, what we're looking at is that $50 price level because that was the old Hunt Brothers high. We saw the price get just under $50 recently. Some would call that a double top. Some might say that it's just prelude for a bust through that magic, if you will, $50 level. From what I hear you're saying here today, David Morgan, you think that we're going to breach that level sometime in 2012. Absolutely, I do. I, you know, there's just not that much silver around. What is available is tightly held. Yes, there's been a huge increase in silver production in the last few years. I admit that. There's also been a huge increase in solar panel production. And if you go into the, we're going into a huge deflationary mode, silver is a self-correcting situation because 70% is base metal mining. So if you had a huge contraction in economic activity, that would curtail uh, the base metal miners by quite a, a bit, and that would mean less silver production. So I really am still bullish. It's going to be, again, very volatile. 
but as more and more people wake up that there is no way out. Okay, let me, let me cut in there for a second. So in other words, sure. when people say, oh, well, silver is an industrial metal, uh, it's bearish uh, in a uh, decelerating economy, what you're saying is actually it's bullish because that means less mining of the base metals, which actually takes silver supply off the market. Meanwhile, there's still demand on the monetary side. But I want to talk about MF Global for a second and their crime spree. Uh, we've got a couple of minutes left. At the end of 2011, the trustees were taking or talking about liquidating customer gold and silver positions. And there is a, a, a notion, actually, that the silver position on J.P. Morgan's balance sheet seemed to reflect to the ounce exactly what was taken out of MF Global's balance sheet. Your thoughts on the connection with the silver gold, MF Global collapse, and do you see any connection there with J.P. Morgan? Well, I can't dispute it's very odd that those numbers line up. That's about all I'll say. I think you implied enough for people to think on their own. What I will add to that is that uh, I'm remiss, and I, I, I don't mind being wrong, but I, it really upsets me. Because I've stated from the get-go that if you had a fully paid-for warehouse receipt or paying, paying storage on your silver or gold, and it was one of the warehouses, which is really a bank approved by the CME, that you were safe. And that turns out not to be true. It looks like it's varying right now. I haven't seen the final ruling. It may be out, and I might have missed it. I just got back from vacation. But regardless, it's like 72%. So you've actually paid for metal. You bought it. You stored it. You've put all your fees into the storage costs, and yet you're only going to get 70% on the dollar. I mean, this is so, so bad. And that's another reason you're going to see more move into the physical realm. I've already talked to my broker. Some have left the industry. Uh, accounts are dropping off. People just don't trust the system. It's breaking down in front of our eyes. And the one place you thought you were safe or should be safe uh, also reneges on their promise on a partial basis. So, Max, this really, really upsets me. And I'll take a public apology to anybody that uh, – believed what I believe, that if you owned the physical metal and had a receipt backed by the CME, that you would be made whole, and uh, apparently it won't be. All right, David Morgan of silver-investor.com. We're out of time. Thanks so much for being on the Kaiser Report. My pleasure, Max. Thank you. All right, and that's going to do it for this edition of the Kaiser Report with me, Max Kaiser, and Stacy Herbert. I want to thank my guest, the silver guru himself, David Morgan, is to the silver market with Bill Gross is to the bond market. He's literally the axe in the silver market, so follow his work closely. If you want to send me an email, send it to kaiserreport at rttv.ru. Until next time, Max Kaiser saying bye, y'all.